from Channel 3, CT23 with Eric Parker. Good morning. We begin our program with concerns that some of Connecticut's criminals are being let out of prison too soon by the state's Board of Pardons and Paroles and being let out in significant numbers, especially over the past couple of years. On, Wednesdays, on Wednesday, families of crime victims showed up at the Capitol to explain why they think it's wrong that some offenders are being released or being given the opportunity to argue to be paroled much earlier than their sentences allow. As Channel 3's chief political reporter Susan Raff explains, there are also concerns about the leadership of the board deciding the fates of these convicted criminals. They decided to offer that individual a reduction in their sentence. While the Senate was debating the appointment of Carlton Giles, Audrey Carlson was watching. Her daughter Elizabeth was murdered by her former boyfriend. Senator Heather Summers describes the gruesome details. He shut the door, he barricaded it, and he shot her seven times. Giles was the chairman of the Board of Pardons and Paroles. During the pandemic, a lot more criminals were given commutations. That means years shaved off their sentences. In 2020, there were five commutations. Then in 23, 71, 44 were serious violent offenders. This is fighting to keep Elizabeth's memory alive, to honor and remember her and all the other victims' families and survivors that struggle every day. Audrey says Jonathan Carney, who killed her daughter, was given 42 years in a plea deal, but recently was told Carney was applying for commutation. Giles was the chairman of the Board of Pardons and Paroles, but Governor Lamont decided not to reappoint him. That decision has been applauded by Republicans and Audrey Carlson, but Giles was nominated to be a board member, and his nomination has now been approved, mainly along party lines. Senator Gary Winfield doesn't believe Giles broke any statutes, but says we need to take a closer look. The question, I think, for the legislature is whether or not we believe that statute should be tightened up or not. Senator Winfield voted in favor of Giles' nomination, but says a review is in order. In fact, Governor Lamont says there will be a meeting next week. Connecticut is one of a handful of states that actually has a board of pardons and paroles. In most other states, it is the governor who decides when it comes to early releases. For CT23, I'm Susan Raff, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. And joining me now to share his concerns with what's been happening is Republican State Representative Craig Fishbein of the 90th District. Representative Fishbein is ranking member of the Judiciary Committee. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Eric. So we heard that former Commissioner Giles has not, is not going to be the commissioner going forward. Is that a satisfactory resolution to this to you? It's a partial, it's a partial satisfaction. Um, I'm concerned that he remains on the Board of Pardons. Um, at least that's the the intention uh, going forward. Um, I, I would hope that the uncovering of this situation would have uh, caused the governor to turn a new leaf, but that's not where we are. I know you're going to be meeting with the governor uh, coming up this coming week. And what are you going to be asking for? Well, you know, ultimately, through our Constitution, the pardon power vests in the legislature, and the statutes are written very broadly uh, currently. And, um, you know, for instance, what, what has been initiated here is under the auspices of a policy. Uh, policy is undefined in our statutes. I believe that it's more like a regulation or a series of regulations like they normally do. So, uh, you know, ultimately is reigning in what we have uh, had happen whole cloth. Not to get too in the weeds with a couple of lawyers on TV talking, but the difference between a policy and a regulation would be if you put forward a regulation, you'd have some opportunity for people to see it and comment and decide about it. You're saying they just put this policy in on their own. Do you think they violated anything or it's more just that you didn't know? I think that somebody, certainly what they did here was not their pattern and practice in any other occasion. You know, policy t to me means, you know, what color paper you use when you file an application or this has to be filed in triplicate. You know, that's a, an office policy. But when we, uh, under 4-166 of our general statutes, you know, regulation is procedural. You know, how does uh, something operate? Who has rights to something? Um, and you have to essentially get approval through the legislative uh, branch, the Regulations Review Committee, that I actually sit on. 
um, for regulations. So with every other process through this board, they have created regulations. But here they did something totally different. Now the defense, uh, former Commissioner Giles, uh, Chairman Giles, what he said was, yes, they changed some rules. And yes, it resulted in this 71 pardons, all of a sudden this big jump. However, he said they actually made some of the, the, the standards more stringent, making people serve 10 years instead of eight before they can apply, rejecting many people who applied. Is it just that the number jumps so much that something must be wrong, or is the process flawed to get there? No, the process is flawed, and one example I'll give you is the notice provision. So when, when a convicted individual applies for a commutation, notice goes to the victim's family. It doesn't go to the state's attorney's office, though, unless a hearing's going to be had on it. It should be the other way around, right? You don't want to re-victimize a family that had one of these tragic things happen, you know, because, you know, 41 of these commutations were murders. And a lot of the applications, I think there was 371 of them in, in 2022, every single one of those families got notified, but not the state's attorney's office unless they got through the screening process. It should be flipped. And I know if this came to the legislature, we certainly would be pushing for that. So that's just an, another example of it's totally flawed from the beginning. So what would you like to see happen? You'd like to see regulations put in? You'd like to see statutes? You'd like to see a total change? What would you like to see? I would have no problem with, you know, in 1995, the legislature passed a statute that said Board of Pardons and Paroles uh, promulgate regulations having to do with an expedited parole process. And they did that. Um, let's do the same thing here and take a step back, start fresh, and follow the process through the Regulations Review Committee that is, I believe, statutorily and constitutionally required. Now, former Chairman Giles uh, did say, what did have a career as a police officer, um, so his background is certainly not, I, I think, someone who you would say would be soft on crime. Do you think wrong decisions were made as a result of this policy? No, and, and that is one thing I want to stress. You know, in preparation for the, for the public hearing that we had in the Judiciary Committee, I watched every single video um, over the last three years of the board. I've appeared before the board on behalf of clients in the past. I, I really don't think that given the rules that they created that perhaps decisions were made incorrectly. And I've had a relationship with Chairman Giles for, for years now. Um, I've always known him to be a upstanding person, uh, very cordial, nice to work with. Um, I just think he was, he was led in the wrong direction. All right, I do want to read, we do have a statement from Jennifer Medina Zaccanini, the chairperson who's been appointed by the governor to take over. She says, I'm truly honored to be appointed as chair of the Board of Pardons and Paroles by Governor Lamont. As previously stated, I look forward to my continued work with the dedica dedicated staff at the board, as well as collaboration with other state agencies. It is my goal that with the help of my team, we will continue our efforts to increase public safety and lower recidivism through successful reintegration of those suitable for a pardon or parole. Regarding the recent attention to the commutation process, I am aware of expressed concerns and have temporarily paused hearings pending an upcoming meeting with various stakeholders. Since 1883, commutations have been an integral part of our system in Connecticut, and after consideration of input from necessary parties, we will resume hearings. The Supreme Court has called uh, the pardon and, and, and commutation process a crucial failsafe. Um, just this week, uh, 17 Yale law professors wrote in the Connecticut Law Tribune urging the board to resume the commutation process, saying it is an important part of the system. Does it go forward in some capacity? Is that the plan, just tweak the rules? If people are watching this saying, oh my gosh, 70-something people got out, this has to stop. Is that your message? No, I, not at all. I think that commutation should exist. I, I, I agree that they are an important portion. You know, there was a hearing that I watched where a gentleman had been um, sentenced to like 60 years um, in imprisonment. And that's basically a life sentence. I think he was 23 at the time. And, you know, during the hearing he presented, um, you know, the, the victim's family has um, gone on. They, in fact, were supportive of him, his sentence being reduced. Um, he's done exemplary things while he's been incarcerated. Um, you know, those are people, that is one of the goals. You know, you compare that to the individual who has done nothing in prison, right, and then you're going to have the sentence, but th those good things should be rewarded. I think where the line is is important. And, and the other thing I think it's important to note is a lot of the, we sentence people differently today. Years ago we would say, okay, you get 40 years and that's it. 
But there was no, pa no period of reintegration, um, you know, no halfway house, nothing like that. Sure. So part of what they have done with these commutations is we'll reduce the sentence, take five years off or something like that. But that, you know, we're going to reduce that to three years in a halfway house. You know, which is probably better for the person who has been incarcerated for decades and then is going to be let out. So I just think that the legislature needs to be part of this process. Well, I know you said you have a meeting coming up in the coming week with the governor and other stakeholders. Uh, certainly it would be easy to just throw your hands up and say this is all wrong, but a lot of thoughtful comments. I appreciate you being on here. Representative Craig Fishbein, thanks for being with us. Thank you, Eric.